2,000 years ago, the Lord Jesus said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and promised, I come quickly. Through 2,000 years of hoping, and through 2,000 years of waiting, generations of Christians had been eagerly looking forward to the Lord Jesus' return. All of mankind yearned for the Savior to arrive and bring about the complete salvation of humanity. Just when the world was at its darkest, when Satan's evil forces were at their most savage and ferocious in their resistance against God, dawn broke in the East, in China. In 1991, that extraordinary year, the incarnate Son of Man, Almighty God, appeared in the house churches to express the truth and to do work. There, he began to carry out the work of judgment, beginning with the house of God. China has historically been a land in which the denial of God has been greatest, and resistance against him most fanatic and vicious, where the great red dragon lies coiled. At the start of China's economic reforms in the 1980s, to everyone's great surprise, the CCP rulers whose hatred against God and religious faith was always extreme, actually took limited steps toward allowing greater religious freedom. Sporadic groups of Christians who had survived years of persecution and depression at the hands of the CCP were quick to set up new house churches. And multitudes of people who acknowledged God's existence joined these churches. Before long, house churches were popping up all over mainland China. All the Christians were overjoyed and extolled the mightiness of God. According to the communist fiend's nature and extreme hatred of God, the existence of religious freedom is forbidden. So these extraordinary events make it evident that all things are in God's hands. It is God who rules over the progress of all of human history. It is God who leads all of mankind. Nevertheless, none of all those people who had returned before the Lord Jesus realized that the sudden resurgence of house churches had happened wholly in order to pave the way for the appearance of the Son of Man. The Holy Spirit began to perform great work among China's house churches, and all who believed in the Lord shared in the peace and happiness bestowed by the Holy Spirit. This was especially true of members of the local church, the Shouters. They would gather to call out the Lord Jesus' name, to pray, read the words of the Lord, and to read the spiritual works of Watchman Ni and Witness Lee. Their church life was full of enjoyment. 
Amidst the CCP's crazed persecution and depression, people longed for the return of the Lord Jesus. In the Central Plains and in northern China, especially in Henan province, faith in the Lord rapidly formed into a rising trend. The assemblies in which people would shout out the Lord Jesus' name practically became a household word. Everyone knew about them. The great resurgence of China's house churches paved the way for the appearance and work of Almighty God, Christ of the last days. I started believing in the Lord in 1982 after freedom of religion was restored in China. In 1983, my family began hosting assemblies. Many came to hear the gospel and grow faith in the Lord. Soon more were coming to our house to hear the messages. During the assemblies, the rooms and courtyard of my home were packed. Normally, there would be 50 or 60 participating, sometimes as many as 100. So many, indeed. Back then, I also met quite a few people from other house churches, and each assembly was attended by many people. Some of them would even gather in caves. And every gathering was absolutely packed with participants. There were a great many believers in Henan. Back then, everyone was so happy, so free right. and unrestrained in their spirits. We all wanted to call out and sing hymns in His praise. There was such enjoyment. It felt wonderful to worship the Lord. How truly blessed we would be if we could welcome His arrival. Amen. Amen. I started going to assembly with my parents back in 1983. Back then, I was still little, only eight years old. It just felt good to worship the Lord, but I didn't understand. I would join in when the adults prayed, and when they sang, I would clap my hands. I just knew it made me happy. Back then, we would all assemble in people's homes. At each assembly, people filled every single seat in the room. They'd fill the courtyard and the windows were jammed with people leaning in to hear. And at the start of every assembly, we would all call out to the Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, amen. Oh, Lord Jesus, amen. We called just like that, right up until a big climax. And then we would all pray together and sing in praise to the Lord. It was always such a lively atmosphere. We would fellowship the Lord's words and our own testimonies to his salvation. Having the work of the Holy Spirit was so gratifying. And all the brothers and sisters got on really well together. We were like family. Everyone was so passionate about spreading the gospel and bearing witness. Soon more people began to believe, in some villages over half the population. The gospel was flourishing, and we all hoped that the Lord would return to hold power on earth and make our lives better. I began to believe in the Lord Jesus in 1985. Back then, assemblies were held right in my home. Later, the United Front Work Department came to our church repeatedly and told us that the Shouters were enemies of the state and were banned by the government. That's when I discovered how opposed the CCP was to the Shouters. Actually, long ago I'd realized the CCP was an atheist party and against believers in God. Seeing the way it persecuted and arrested the Shouters made me feel that the Shouters must be right. Amen. And that the three-self church, which the CCP endorsed, was surely wrong and a sham. So we chose to join the recovery. In addition to reading the Bible, sometimes we'd read the messages of Watchman Nee and Witness Lee. We gained a great deal from reading messages for building up new believers and the sermons. They provided us with a path to practice. I felt Nee and Lee's messages bore the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit and were in line with the words of the Lord Amen. Jesus. In those days, we would frequently call out the name of the Lord mm -hmm. and train ourselves to live in the Spirit. Yeah. We also would sing and dance in praise of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. God. It was so gratifying. We had a growing sense that the house churches had been blessed by the Lord and that they involved the work of the Holy Spirit. Though we were often persecuted and arrested for worshiping the Lord in the house churches, we knew when we prayed to the Lord, we had Him by our side. We were moved by the Holy Spirit and had the guidance of God's words. Amen. We were sure that this was the path the Lord guided us to. Amen. Amen. It brought us great peace of mind and our conviction grew and grew. We all looked forward to the Lord's return so that we could live side by side with Him. How joyous that would be. Yes, yes indeed. indeed. Thank, Thank God. God. The resurgence of the house churches in the 1980s. In three short years, 
saw the Shouters membership in Henan province surge to several million at least. The Chinese government, which so despised God and the truth, simply could not permit the existence and resurgence of these house churches. Between 1983 and 1987, the CCP carried out two frenzied crackdowns on the house churches, mainly the Shouters. Many of the leaders of these house churches were arrested and given heavy sentences. In the cities of Anyang, Pingdingsheng, and Dengfeng of Henan province, as well as counties such as Lusheng, Qingfeng, and Neihuang, some leaders from the Shouters were sentenced to prison terms of longer than 10 and even 20 years. Some even died as a result of the persecution they suffered. Faced with such a hostile environment, many leaders and workers from the churches were forced to flee their homes and go into hiding. A lot of believers, too, grew so timid and afraid that they renounced their beliefs. But those who genuinely believed in the Lord and loved the truth continued to hold fast by gathering, reading the Bible, and praying in secret. Some, despite being arrested and imprisoned multiple times, kept on spreading the gospel and testifying to the Lord after they were released. The more hostile their surroundings, the more fervently they prayed to the Lord Jesus, wishing that he would return soon and save them from the dark rule of Satan. In 1987, many people from our church in Anyang County were arrested. After rounding up the leaders and workers of the church, the police tied them up, put them in the backs of three flatbed trucks, and paraded them through the streets. Around each of their necks, they hung a large sign that read political prisoner, and each person was restrained by a pair of armed police. Indeed. After being paraded through the streets, they were taken onto a large stage to be criticized by the masses. Some of them received particularly harsh sentences. For example, there were two church brothers named Fung. One of them was given 12 years in jail, the other eight. Another brother, surnamed Lee, was sentenced to seven years. By then, we were really feeling quite anxious about what would happen because we too were worried that the day might come when we would be arrested. Mm -hmm. Yes. All we could do was to pray to the Lord in earnest and hope that he would soon return to save us from the forces of Satan. Back in 1983 and 1987, we endured two major crackdowns by the CCP, and after that, things got harder and harder for us. Like birds startled by the twang of a bowstring, we all felt timid and frightened. We had no idea where on earth we could hide. Only by praying to the Lord could we manage to feel a little at peace. At the time, some of the more committed brothers and sisters gathered us together to read prophecies and fellowship about omens that told of the Lord's coming. It always helped to strengthen our faith. Though we still had moments of weakness, we would remember that the Lord was about to return, and it wouldn't do for us not to have testimony. We had to bear testimony to Him. Yes, yeah, sure. sure. Back then, it had been foretold, the Lord would return in the year 2000. The very thought of that brought a mountain of strength back to our hearts. That's right. We all believed the coming of the Lord would bring great disasters and destroy the wicked people who resisted God, and that the Lord would judge those who had arrested, persecuted, slandered, and humiliated us. Because the Lord had said, Vengeance belongs to me, I will recompense. Amen. Amen. His words gave us the faith to endure all of these many hardships. No amount of suffering felt too great, for the day of the Lord was near. Yes. When we read the book of Revelation and the life study of the Bible, we felt certain that the Lord would return in the year 2000. We were glad that we were born in the last days, to be raptured before the Lord while still living. Now we had the faith to spread the gospel and bear testimony to Him. The lyrics of one of the hymns read that our generation, that of the last days, was certain to welcome the return of the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
We all felt so inspired when we were singing that hymn together. So we waited, eagerly, thinking, Lord Jesus, please come back soon. Please save us from this reign of darkness and end our suffering. Amen. Amen. The Chinese Communist Party's frenzied crackdown on house churches led to the brutal persecution of a great many Christians. Just as the dark clouds were pressing in and an ill mist cloaked the land and many people's faith in and love of God were beginning to cool. In 1991, something extraordinary occurred. A son of man began to speak in the house churches. People were both astounded and warmed by his words. He revealed some important mysteries from the Bible, sending shockwaves throughout the churches. This son of man had been born into an ordinary family in the northwest of China, and his passionate faith in God had begun in junior high. In 1989, this son of man, feeling a heavy burden in his heart, willingly gave up everything to perform his ministry and serve God. In February of 1991, he began to speak. Each day, he would write down the words in his heart and pass them on to those in charge of the local church. They saw that these were no ordinary utterances. The words felt like they carried a lot of weight, but at the same time, both fresh and moving. They seemed born of enlightenment from the Holy Spirit, and so the words were passed on to the top leader of the church. That is, the man who is today being used by God. After reading the words, it became clear to him and his co-workers that these were the utterances of none other than the Holy Spirit. They immediately decided to copy them and sent them to the churches in northeastern China so that God's chosen people could gather to read them and fellowship about them. This small collection of texts came to be known as the words of the Holy Spirit. Soon after, the words of the Holy Spirit continued to be uttered and did not stop. An utterance came practically once every day or two. As the mysteries of the Bible began to be revealed, people grew astonished. The man used by God arranged for the churches to print all the words of the Holy Spirit in the order they had been spoken, and then distribute them to the churches of Almighty God in the three provinces of northeastern China, as well as Henan, Anhui, Shandong, and Shanxi. From that moment on, life in the Church of Almighty God involved reading all of the words expressed by Almighty God. The more God's chosen people shared in His words, the more their hearts lit up. Not only did they gradually come to understand the truth, but they also gained a path to practice. They were all overcome with happiness. I read the words of the Holy Spirit was in February of 1991. When I finally read them, they felt so fresh and touching. I'd never heard anything like them before. These words struck me in particular. Praise has come to Zion, 
and God's dwelling place has appeared. The glorious holy name extolled by all people spreads. Ah, almighty God, the head of the universe, Christ of the last days. He is the shining sun that has risen upon Mount Zion, which towers in majesty and grandeur over all the universe. Amen. Amen. When I read these words, it felt like they had come straight from the Holy Spirit. Could this really be the voice of the Holy Spirit? They spoke of the glorious holy name and Almighty God. Was this testimony to God's new name? Almighty God was the head of the universe. He was Christ of the last days. He was the shining sun. So what was all of this about? I didn't really understand it at the time, but I could sense that these were really utterances from the Holy Spirit, so I was excited. Whenever we held an assembly, we would sing this hymn of God's words. The more we sang it, the more gratified we felt. Indeed. Reading the words of the Holy Spirit left me completely astonished. I got the deepest impression when I read these words of God. The triumphant king sits upon his glorious throne. He has, he has accomplished, accomplished redemption, redemption and, and led all his people to appear in glory. He holds the universe in his hands, and with his divine wisdom and might, he has built and made firm Zion. With his majesty, he judges the evil world. He judges all nations and all peoples, the earth and seas and all the living things in them, as well as those who are drunk on the wine of promiscuity. God, God shall surely judge us them. Amen. Amen. I could feel that these words were special and carried authority. No human could speak such words. This was the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Some people also made these words into hymns, and singing them out loud always made us feel so thrilled. Uh -huh. Thanks, be Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. In those days, we read the utterances of the Holy Spirit every day. And the more we read, the happier we grew. We became full of hope. The Holy Spirit was doing extraordinary work, and we felt so much gratification in our hearts. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. God's chosen people saw that the words of the Holy Spirit showed them the way to practice the truth and that they were highly practical. The chosen ones relished the peace, joy, freedom, and emancipation brought by the Holy Spirit's work and sensed just how precious God's words of this time were. And so, the churches gradually shifted from focusing on reading and interpreting the Bible to reading and fellowshipping about God's current utterances. When God's chosen people read the words of the Holy Spirit, light dawned in their hearts. They had a path to practice, and it had become easy for them to understand the truth. They were all drawn by and attracted to God's contemporary utterances, and they embraced them. After that, God's words gradually went deeper, and the chosen ones were all brought into His work. The Church of Philadelphia has taken shape, which is entirely due to the grace and mercy of God. Love for God rises in the hearts of the myriad saints who do not waver on their spiritual journey. They hold fast to their belief that the one true God has become flesh, and that He is the head of the universe who commands all things. This is confirmed by the Holy Spirit. It is as immovable as the mountains, and it shall never change. It is as immovable as the mountains, and it shall never change. And it shall never change. Back then, we would gather every day to eat and drink the words of the Holy Spirit, even though we didn't really understand them. Somehow, though, we felt enjoyment deep down. It was a gratification brought on by the Holy Spirit's work. Amen. Amen. Later, when the words of God began to reveal mysteries, we began to feel more and more enlightened. The Holy Spirit revealed the meaning of rapture, the water of the river of life, the new Jerusalem, as well as the 144,000 victorious male children. He revealed all of this using simple words. Later on, God further revealed what the wise virgins and the foolish virgins meant and explained the opening of the scrolls, the seven seals, seven bowls, plagues, trumpets, thunders, and so on. His words opened our eyes, leaving us utterly convinced. Only then did we understand something of these mysteries. It made us certain these utterances of the Holy Spirit were God's words to mankind. Amen. Amen. 
because for several thousand years, no one had been able to yes. explain the mysteries yes. of the Bible. Yes. Only God could reveal them to us. Amen. Amen. Gathering to read the words of the Holy Spirit, it felt as though God were speaking to us. We had no words to describe the joy and the gratification that we were all feeling, perhaps because of the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When the Holy Spirit started to make more utterances about once every day or two, and his content got more rich, some of his utterances spoke of life entry. Some spoke of how to pray to God, how to tell him what was in your heart, and how to draw near to him and commune with him. Some taught people how to contemplate God's words and grasp his will, how to turn their backs on the flesh and practice the truth, and how to be honest. Other words communicated what it meant to follow and submit to God and so on. Many subjects were covered. Before I had believed that the leaders of the church had been appointed by God and that to obey them was to obey God, for this reason I just accepted their interpretation of the Bible and went along with it. I couldn't differentiate. Only after reading God's words was my practice rectified. Only then did I realize that when believing in God, one must always obey his words. No matter who a person is, if what they say is at odds with the words of God and goes against his will, then you must never listen to that person. Amen. Amen. This is a matter of principle. That's, That's right. right. We also used to train ourselves to be with God and to live in the Spirit. But we still had no idea what it actually meant to live in the Spirit. Now we understood. Only through prayer, singing hymns, forsaking the flesh, putting his words into practice and living by them, were we living in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Only after reading God's utterances did I gain some understanding of what it meant to truly submit to and believe in God. Only then did I have a path to practice. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Back then, we read these words of God. Chapter 26 of Utterances of Christ in the Beginning, in the Word Appears in the Flesh. You must now listen carefully and heed my words. Fellowship more with me and come close to me more. In all that you do not understand, I will guide you and I will lead you forward. Pay no mind to fellowshipping more with others. There are now many who preach letters and doctrines, and too few who genuinely possess my reality. Their fellowship makes one confused and numb, not knowing how to progress. Having heard them, one might merely understand a bit more of the letters and doctrines. You must watch your step and keep your heart living before me at all times. You must communicate with me and come close to me, and I will let you see that which you do not understand. Take care in your speech, observe your heart at all times, and walk the path I walk. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks, be to God. Thanks be to God. I sensed just how important these words of the Holy Spirit were for us. Yes, yes that's, that's true. true. Each utterance brought new enlightenment, shed new light, yes. and gave provision of life. We had to eat and drink of God's words, praying and contemplating His utterances, to seek an understanding of His will and search for a path to practice. Amen. Amen. After doing this for a while, I'd sensed I'd gained something. Mm -hmm. Without realizing it, I'd come to understand more about having faith in God and saw what I lacked in my own life. Amen. Amen. Before, I had focused on running about and expending myself for God. But after reading the words of the Holy Spirit, I started to pay attention to eating and drinking God's words and contemplating them. Mm -hmm. Only then did I realize how I should believe in God. To focus on reading His words and putting them into practice, that was the key. Amen. Amen. Previously in worshiping the Lord, I'd known nothing of these matters. It was these present-day words of the Holy Spirit that put me on the right track in my Amen. faith. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Each day, God's chosen people shared in the utterances of the Holy Spirit. They received the provision of the living waters of life and were overcome with joy and happiness. Reading God's present words brought light into their hearts and they were filled with gratification. Some also put God's words to music and everyone sang and danced in His praise. The Holy Spirit performed great work, and God's chosen people savored the true bliss of living in the house of God.
On May 8, 1991, the man used by God was holding an assembly in a house church in Yongyuan Township in Heilongjiang. When the church was surrounded by Heilongjiang Provincial Police, Harbin City Police, and Acheng County Police. When that happened, the hundred strong congregation fled in every direction. The man used by God and a few of his fellow workers succeeded in escaping to Henan. And there, they began to do the work of the Church of Almighty God. Later, the incarnate Son of Man also arrived in Hanan. From this moment onward, he began to make more and more utterances. Churches all over the land read and enjoyed these contemporary words of God. Everyone felt that they were so real and that they spoke with such clarity of the truths that should be practiced in one's faith and of the path of entry to life. God's chosen people all hungered and thirsted to read the words of the Holy Spirit and were overcome with bliss from enjoying God's words. From June 1992 onward, the Son of Man began to travel around to the churches, speaking and working and watering and shepherding God's chosen people. He made his way to the churches of Almighty God in Kaifeng, Chengyuan, Anyang, Dengfeng, Pingdingshan, Yixian, and more. As a result, Henan became a base, a center for God's appearance and work during the last days. I remember when Almighty God appeared and began to work in 1991. Back then, we ate and drank of God's present day words daily. We learned more about the truths that should be practiced in our faith, the things we should discern, and the mysteries revealed by the Holy Spirit. We felt so fulfilled, for none of these words were in the Bible, nor had we ever seen or heard them while worshiping the Lord in the past. When eating and drinking of the current words of the Holy Spirit, we felt we'd been set free. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. At around that time, I read these words of Almighty God. You must be awake and awaiting at all times, and you must pray before me more. You must recognize the various plots and cunning schemes of Satan. Recognize the spirits, know people, and be able to discern all kinds of people, events, and things. You must also eat and drink more of my words, and more importantly, you must be able to eat and drink of them by yourselves. Equip yourselves with all the truth and come before me so that I may open your spiritual eyes and allow you to see all the mysteries that lie within the spirit. Amen. Amen. Only after reading God's words did I realize that this was his will. It wasn't as I had imagined. God wasn't satisfied by mere humility, tolerance, or caring of the cross. He wanted us to see through the tricks and cunning schemes of Satan. We had to be able to discern people and spirits and identify various things. Never before was such a message heard in the world of religion. Yes, yes. Amen. amen. Before we'd only speak words and phrases of the Bible when we worshiped, we couldn't identify Satan or discern the various types of people. Our love and submission were muddled and confused. There was no principle to our tolerance and humility. We were self-righteous and arrogant, but pretended to be humble saying that others were better than us. Sometimes we would meet people who had even been possessed by demons, yet we loved and helped them as brothers and sisters. Often during assemblies, it became clear the words of the pastors were mere academic knowledge of the Bible, but we blindly looked up to them and followed them. The behavior of the pastors ran contrary to the words of the Lord, but we couldn't discern them and were confused in our submission. Normally during assemblies, we only perform religious ceremonies. We even followed doctrine and prayers, voicing exaggerated, empty words. We saw no problem in doing so. How could we have been so pathetic and blind? Indeed. Indeed. The words of Almighty God were so real. They revealed all the aberrations of our faith in the Lord. Only then could we be discerning and realize what the reality of truth was. Amen. 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 Thanks, Thanks, be Thanks be to God. When I believed in the Lord before, I only read the Bible, prayed, and went to assemblies. I thought that if I gave things up, expended myself, carried the cross, and worked hard, he would commend me. However, I had no idea what the Lord wanted. 
or what his will was. I was totally ignorant. I then read these words of Almighty God. Eat and drink my words often. Ponder what I have said. Pay attention to practicing my words and live out the reality of my words. This is the key issue. The process of building the church is also the process of the growth of life. If your life stops growing, you cannot be built. Relying on naturalness, on the flesh, on zealousness, on contributions, on qualifications, however good you may be, you will not be built. You must live within the words of life. Live within the enlightenment and illumination from the Holy Spirit. Know your actual situation and be a changed person. You must have the same insight in the Spirit, have new enlightenment, and be able to keep up with new light. You must be able to ceaselessly draw close to me and communicate with me. Be able to base your actions in daily life on my words. Be able to handle properly all sorts of people, events, and things based on my words. Having my words as your standard and living out my disposition in all activities in your life. Amen. Amen. The words of Almighty God put it so clearly. From that moment on, I gradually began to comprehend that God didn't want us to rely on our own zealousness and our faith, but spend more time eating, drinking, and contemplating His words. He wanted us to focus on putting them into practice and living out their reality. This was God's will. Amen. 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 My faith in the Lord used to be overzealous and ignorant. I'd run about the streets ignoring the truths. I even thought my faith commendable. Now I see my faith back then was just confused. The current words of Almighty God rectified these aberrations in my faith. His words shed light on the path I should walk while believing in God. I felt like a child who was just beginning to grow up and finally starting to figure things out. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. So I focused on practicing the words of God. I concentrated on being an honest person and on knowing myself. Only then did I experience growth in my life. Thanks be to Thanks Almighty be to God. God. Thanks be to God. The words of the Almighty God are so real. I gain something from every utterance I read. These are some of the words of Almighty God that I read. I only desire a select few, not a great many people. Those who do not attach importance to attaining entry to my words do not deserve to be good soldiers of Christ. They instead act as Satan's lackeys and interrupt my work. Do not assume that this is a small matter. Whoever interrupts my work violates my administrative decrees, and I will most certainly discipline them severely. Amen. 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 After reading God's words, I sensed the work of the Holy Spirit had risen to a higher level. What he required of mankind had risen too. I had to stop being so muddled and confused in my faith as I was before. The Lord Jesus said, For many are called, but few are chosen. The Holy Spirit was speaking every day and doing great work. If I did not follow and believe in God properly, then I was sure to be eliminated. Actually, back then, I wasn't too sure what a soldier of Christ was, but I was filled with great conviction. I was willing to suffer any price to pursue the truth, no matter how overwhelmed I was with work or family matters. I take the time each day to eat and drink the words of God. Every day I was brimming with resolve. I wanted to listen to the words of God and submit to God. Amen. Amen. Whenever something happened to me, I would focus on praying to God and seeking His will. Sometimes I had bad thoughts, so I trained myself to follow the words of God. Practicing this brought peace and gratification to my heart and increased my resolve to pursue the truth. Amen. Amen. Thanks be Amen. 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 I was really zealous in my own worship of the Lord. Back then, I'd busy myself every day with church matters. And when I learned some doctrines, I'd share them with others. When my brothers and sisters were weak, I'd support them. I believed I was being responsible towards the church, loving towards my brothers and sisters, and that I was the Lord's beloved. I had never considered there might be anything aberrant about my faith in the Lord. After accepting Almighty God, though, and after reading many of His words, I came to feel ashamed. Only then did I realize I possessed no reality of the truth. With superficial words and theory, I talked down to people. I had no self-awareness. I was so shameless. During an assembly, I read chapter 13 of Utterances of Christ in the beginning. You must have an understanding of the people with whom you fellowship, and fellowship about spiritual matters in life. Only then can you supply life to others, 
and make up for their inadequacies, you should not take a lecturing tone with them, which is fundamentally the wrong position to have. In fellowship, you must have an understanding of spiritual matters. You must have wisdom and be able to understand what is in the hearts of other people. You must be a correct person if you are to serve others, and you must fellowship with what you have. Amen. Amen. After reading God's words, I began to reflect. Was there any enlightenment from the Holy Spirit in what I fellowshipped? Was I communicating a path to practice? Could I resolve my brothers and sisters' actual problems? Only then did I realize I'd been speaking my own thoughts and ideas, just saying whatever I wanted, while respecting nothing of the actual states and difficulties of my brothers and sisters. At times, what I fellowshipped was so insipid, I knew I did not possess any light. Yet for the sake of pride, I kept fellowshipping that way, and by doing so, tried to fool God and trick my brothers and sisters. Yes, yes. yes. The thought of it brought fear into my heart. I knew that working thusly, I'd be despised and condemned by God. Thereafter, when I attended assemblies, I would fellowship the words of God with my brothers and sisters. Amen. Anyone who gained insight would engage in fellowship. We all took turns speaking, searching God's words for a path to practice. As for me, I spoke of whatever I'd figured out, without any kind of pretense. I opened up to others and spoke the words within my heart. Everyone relished these assemblies and felt nourished by them. Thanks, Thanks, be, to God. God. Thanks be to God. We're eating and drinking the words of Almighty God every day in church. We fellowship the truth and the knowledge of ourselves. We've all learned and gained so much. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. It's been many years since I began believing in Almighty God. During this time, I've enjoyed the provision of all these utterances from God. What a pity my caliber is so poor. All I can speak of are spiritual theories. I haven't lived out much of the reality of the truth. But compared to what I gained from religion, I have gained so much. Though I've given up a little and expended myself for God, I have not attained the will of God, nor have I borne good testimony to Him. I really do still owe Him so much. Nineteen ninety one was a year to remember. It was the year in which Christ of the last days began to speak. It was the year that paved the way for the work of judgment, beginning with the house of God, and the year in which the age of grace crossed into the age of kingdom. That year, God's chosen people enjoyed many of the present-day words of the Holy Spirit, and this brought light into their hearts and was of great benefit to them. Truly did they enjoy the great work of the Holy Spirit. They tasted of peace and happiness and of the bliss of freedom. For this reason, God's chosen people call 1991 the Golden Year. From February 11th to the end of November 1991, the Son of Man spoke 120 utterances, all of which were recorded in Utterances of Christ in the Beginning, in the Word Appears in the Flesh. The utterances of the Son of Man completely fulfilled the prophecy of the Lord Jesus. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And the words of the book of Revelation, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Shen 